Okay, so we are live everywhere and we have our first attendees. Thank you very much, everyone who has already joined us and welcome to our very interesting webinar with great speakers and great guests. As you may know, those who have registered, we are talking about today, today about English American studies in Germany. And we have two great programs to, to present to you, dear attendees, and not to take a lot of your time. Uh, I will, of course, uh, very quickly, very soon, uh, introduce to you the speakers. But before I do that, I will ask Sibay, our moderator today, to present shortly my German university, to introduce herself, then I will take over and then the floor will be for the main persons of today. Please, Sibay, go ahead. And I will ask all other guests to turn off their cameras and mics for some time. Thank you very much. Okay, um, hello everyone. So again, welcome to today's webinar. We will be talking about um, studying English slash American studies in Germany. But before going into that, I would just like to introduce you to three main offerings from my German universities that you could find on our website that may help you um, looking for trying to look for a new program. So first thing first, when you open our website, you will see um, our study finder on the left side. So this is the biggest database of English taught study programs. We have over 2000 of them um, in our database, and then you could customize it via cities, universities, just play around with it. Um, this is a really good place to start if you are trying to look into a program that may interest you. So the second thing is our articles. We have written over 70 articles on different topics from visa applications to language requirements. So if you wanna know more about, you know, the application process, as well as like how studying Germany looks like, make sure you check them out as well. So the very last thing is if you want something more interactive, you could also join our weekly webinars, um, which you, we are hosting. Well, thanks to our very diverse team, we're hosting it now in different languages as well. So we have it in English, Italian, Spanish, Russian. We're adding more languages and as you can see, there are a lot of topics, so make sure you check that out. If you're interested in some of them, just go ahead and register. Um, so these are the three things that you should definitely check out on our website. We got the study finder, the articles, and the weekly webinars. Um, last but not least, here's a little bit about us. So my German university is a startup that is based in Hamburg, Germany, but we, our team members are from everywhere in the world. So we have team members that either worked in the German edu higher education system or have, you know, studied and did a program in Germany already. So you know that we know our way around here and we are always here to help. Um, so that's just a little bit about my German university. Now I'm going into the background. So during this webinar, if you have any questions, you could leave a comment in the Q&A section. Um, so that me or the guests would have the chance to answer them for you. Um, and if we do not have the chance to get through all the questions during this webinar, um, you could also find us on Facebook or you could simply write us an email and we could get back to you later with your questions. Yep. Um, I think that's about it. I'm gonna return the floor to Jor Georgi. Have fun. Thank you very much, Sibe, for all this information. And I would just repeat once again for our attendees. So you are welcome to send your questions in a Q&A, &A, uh, which you can see in the below part of your Zoom interface. So you can put your question there and we'll get back to it definitely. You cannot use the chat function for today, but me, Sibe, uh, or me, our guests as well can use it and they will uh, they will be sharing with you some interesting links throughout the presentation. So I would suggest to our attendees to keep an eye on the chat as well. And I already shared with you one link toward to our uh, study finder. And we have already our first question. This is really great. Okay, and one more thing, uh, dear friends, before, before I start with my short presentation, I would like to ask you one important thing for you and for us as well. 
when you put a question in a q and a and you your question is directed at one of these programs one of these two programs please mention that that you are asking for example a question about deadlines and this question is directed to university of Saarland or university of bamberg this would be really easier for us to really uh, well follow uh, and navigate through the questions and easily answer and correctly answer to your question please keep that in mind Okay, now I will uh, share with you my screen and go and in, and introduce to you some, I think, quite interesting information about studying in Germany. So once again, our topic is today is study English American studies in Germany. So and as I said, we have special guests today, and we have two uh, pre, uh, two programs from two universities that will be presented, which is really wonderful. So uh, we have guests from University of Saarland and a guest from University of Bamberg, uh, so Dr. Gerhard and Dr. Münderlein. They will present, both will present uh, master studies, master programs in American studies, British studies, English linguistics, and English and American studies. And I will quickly, very quickly also uh, hand it over to them. But before I do that, some interesting information that you that may be useful for you, dear friends. So first of all, if you are interested more, if you're interested in studying Germany, and I'm sure you are, that's why you're uh, attending our webinar, but if you are interested more in German language, German taught study programs, then uh, Hochschule Compass may be useful for you. I would like to ask Sibe to share with you in the chat link to Hochschule Compass. So it's mostly for German taught programs. And if you go to Hochschule Compass and try to find uh, degree programs for English American studies or related programs, you will be able to find 163, 66 programs and 79 of them would be in English language. 79 in English. But if you are more interested in uh, uh, in English taught programs, usually, then our study finder, study finder my, by my German university, it should be the stop for you. Uh, and if you go to uh, my German university study finder, to which I already shared the link in the chat, so you can see it, and you will find 90 degree programs uh, for English slash American studies or related subjects. 15 of them will be in bachelor level, and 75 of them will be on master level. And out of 15, bachelor eight will be, more than half will be in English only, and seven out of 75 of master, 45 will be uh, in English only. So in total, there will be 53 programs in English language that you will be able to find. And generally, generally as Sibe mentioned, we have over, I would say, even 2,200 uh, English uh, taught programs or in, in Germany that you can find on our study finder, which is really great opportunity in my humble opinion. Okay, what we also have for you uh, to make it easier on the first steps to navigate through whether you like these programs or not, which program you like, we also have for each subject, we have subject page for you. And subject page, we provide kind of general information on this or that, that subject. For example, we have also sub subject page on English American studies. And I would like to ask Sibe uh, to share this link with you as well in the chat. And also, uh, thank you, Sibe. Uh, um, so here you can find the general information. For example, what are the rankings of those universities that are offering uh, programs, related programs to English American studies, let's say, in this case? What are generally tuition fees? What is the range of tuition fees? What is the What are the application and mission requirements in general or language requirements? So you can find all these basic and general information to have the overview of what's going on when it comes to this or that subject in terms of uh, the different rankings, tuition fees, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it's a really uh, good like initial information for you to uh, continue your further search. Okay, let's move forward. So uh, our pro tip, our advice, best advice for you would be, yes, of course, you should uh, search for the best university profile and study program. Definitely, everyone knows that. But sometimes I think that's a big mistake from the students who think that the only good programs or good universities are those who are ranked high on these international rankings. Of course, they are really good, those who are ranked in these top rankings, but uh, don't forget that these rankings may not really 
catch all those details that might be and are important for you. So uh, don't be guided only by these kind of things like rankings or or big names like cities like Berlin or Munich, let's say. Of course, they have great programs, uh, great universities. But in Germany, based on my personal experience as well, there are lots of great towns, uh, great cities with great universities and great programs, which may not be really well known, but the quality of education is really high. So this is something I would like to keep in mind when you're searching for the programs. Don't go through just through the name by the names or by the rankings. This is not a correct way of searching for the best program for you guys. Okay, so moreover, I would like also to know that there are two types of university, roughly speaking, that you should know about. The first type is Universität or just university. So we have here public universities, also technical universities, and it's divided also into private universities. And you can see some examples here. And if you go to our study finder and you try to search for the programs in the subjects uh, uh, of English and American studies, let's say, that, and you can uh, control for that, like who is providing this program? Is it this type of university? Is it Universität? You can control for that, and then you will find uh, able to find 89 programs in this in these subjects or related subjects. So there are quite a lot of filters that you can use to and you can control for. And the second type of university uh, is this University of Applied Sciences, and we can we have also have division here into public and private. And if you go uh, to our study finder again, you can control for that as well, of course, and you will be able in this case to find one program in this. Um, in these subjects or related subjects that is provided by the University of Applied Science. So when it comes to English and American studies or related programs, most of the, them, absolute majority, I would say, are provided by this uh, type of university, which is called Universität. And of course, then comes uh, question come, comes into play. So what is the difference then between university and University of Applied Sciences, which is a really correct question. And uh, I will try to answer it really simply, but at the same time, understandably. So uh, before, uh, we used to say that University of Applied Sciences are not providing this PhD level, but now we have this cross and tick, uh, meaning that it's not completely true because there are some universities of applied sciences where you can do your PhD. And largely speak more la on larger picture, I would say that uh, the main difference when it comes to universität or university, then we have more theory orientation and research and theory orientation. And when it comes to University of Applied Sciences, then comes into play this practice oriented programs and more in, uh, focused on application. This is the main difference that you should uh, keep in mind, dear friends. Last but not least, before I hand it over to our first guest, first presenter, uh, also one more advice from our side is that sometimes students, like if they want to st uh, study English and American studies, let's say, they, they're they searching only word by word these programs, which may result in missing some of the programs. So some uh, they can be the same programs, really related uh, programs with uh, similar uh, curricula, but you may miss them because of you always using the exact wording. So the wording may be different. For example, there are some cases here. It can be British American postcolonial studies, advanced anglophone studies, English language and linguistics. So there can be a little difference in wording, but when you're searching exactly word by word, you may miss these uh, opportunities. And uh, this is not good to miss them. So I would like to recommend to you to be more attentive in this case as well. And yeah, not, not stick strictly to one particular wording. Okay, uh, dear friends, uh, that was all from my side, I would say. Uh, and I will now hand it over to our first special guest, Dr. Cornelia Gerhardt. So as I said, she's from uh, Zaharland University presenting the MA program in American studies, British studies slash English linguistics. And she's uh, also academic advisor for this master's uh, program. And as you can see also on the map, uh, in this case now, we are really, really close to France. We're almost on the border. Uh, so I will now stop sharing my screen and ask uh, Dr. Gerhard to uh, present her program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Georgi. Uh, so, um, yeah, let me start by sharing my screen. Sorry. Oh. 
Okay. All right. Do you see the right view? Yes. Okay, great. great. So thank you very much for having me. My name is Nele Gerhardt. I'm the study advisor of the uh, master's program, American Studies, British Studies, Studies, English Linguistics at Saarland University. And since you mentioned bachelor's studies, we also have a bachelor's program, right? I will present the master's program, but we also have a, a bachelor's program. So thanks for having me and thanks everybody for joining me for this presentation. So. This is to show you where Saarland University is located while I give you a quick outline of my talk. As Georgie just said, I, I, um, we are located right on the border actually to France. Um, so I will start by sharing some information about the university and um, then I will give you details about the specificities of this program. And uh, finally, I will finish by giving you uh, some ideas about living in Saarbrücken, the capital of Saarland, the city in which uh, Saarland University's main campus is located. So, right, let me start with the university. Sorry, I will just try, I have a problem here. I will just try to move something so that I can actually see my notes. Okay. Sorry about that. So Zaland University was founded in 1948 under the patronage of the French government and the University of Nancy. And I think we can continue to claim today that our aim is to shape this university into an instrument of a true European spirit. We are a medium-sized campus university. We have roughly 17,000 students. 30 students in the master's degree program roughly over the years, and I think um, about 50% international students in the program from all over the world, from China, Russia, Poland, Saudi Arabia, uh, the US, um, yeah, from all over. As you can see, we have a wonderful campus in the middle of a forest, a few minutes from Saarbrücken, and I think we are small enough so that everything is in easy reach and you will not get lost, but big enough to have all the resources that you may need for your study. Um, besides all the Erasmus programs and bilateral partnerships with universities around the globe, of which we actually have hundreds, we are very proud to be part of the University of the Greater Region. This year is the Greater Region. Um, with Saarland, I think maybe you cannot see my mouse. Well, Saarland is right in the middle here, and then to the left, Luxembourg. On, on this side, this is Germany, this is France, and oh, sorry, and then the other one. And then to the west, northwest, you have Belgium. Uh, this is the white spot, is the so called greater region. Um, and every student of Saarland University is automatically also a student of the University of the Greater Region. So you can always take classes with them. It's like an automated, integrated time abroad that you can do by saying, for instance, oh, every Tuesday I will take a class, say, about vampire novels at the University of Metz, because this is something that I'm really interested in. So, in other words, by becoming a student of Saarland University, you will also automatically become a student of the universities of Trier and Kaiserslautern in Germany, the University of Liège in Belgium, the universities of Metz and Nancy in France, and the University of Luxembourg. And most of them also have uh, departments of English and American Studies. And what is even greater, you may also get travel money for attending classes at the other members of the University of the Greater Region. Uh, just recently, we have officially become a European university. We're very proud of that. This new European stamp of approval in the project Transform for Europe will also gr offer great opportunities for you with partner universities across Europe to give you just one example, um, at the moment, there's a possibility to do a summer school on video animation, which will be partly online, but also in Tallinn. And this program will not only finance the class itself, but also the accommodation and travel 
uh, to Estonia. So again, great opportunities for European experience. We have officially been recognized for teaching excellence, for providing an optimal learning environment. Uh, our quality management ensures continuous development of our study programs. And importantly, we offer personal academic supervision. So I can promise that every teacher in your program will know you personally, and you will get to know all of your fellow students. We ensure a good experience from the beginning until your first job. So for instance, with preparatory courses and mentoring, and you will see in a minute how much hands-on experience the MA program, American Studies, British Studies, English Linguistics offers. But also the university itself has a career center, and we have a very strong startup team here in Saarland. So generally speaking, our students easily find jobs after their studies. All right, now more information about the study program itself. Um, the program is accredited until 2022, and we are currently in the process of re-accreditation, which means more quality for you, our students. Uh, this is a consecutive master's program, so you must have completed a bachelor's degree in English or neighboring disciplines. American studies, English studies, gender studies, media studies, translation, linguistics, those will usually be acceptable and we will consider each case individually when you apply. Um, we have three areas of specialization, American studies, British studies and English linguistics and different degree programs. In the following, I will only discuss the single subject program, which means you do not have to, to know any German. In the dual subject program, the second subject is in German, and the modules are, modules are similar, only there's less of everything in a way. <laughs> this is a two years program with 120 credit points. So what does the program consist of and what's special at Saarland University? First, we have seminars, lectures, and a thesis in your chosen specialization, and I guess that will hold in general for master's degrees. However, here's our first fabulous module, which you will not find elsewhere. Um, it's called Core Skills Research Focus, which you will also do in your area of specialization. In this module, it is your own choice how you want to fulfill the requirements. For instance, you could participate in research projects with professors. You could do one of our many certificates that we offer at Saarland University, like for instance, the Europaicum. You could attend conferences, publish in student outlets. You could do summer schools or compile a corpus. You could also actually do creative writing. Everything is acceptable that deepens your understanding or your competencies in, within your chosen specialization. Then we have language classes. Again, probably like most programs, not many classes though, because we want as much freedom in your learning uh, as possible. However, the goal is C2. So we trust in your own initiative and continuously working on your competence in English. What will be helpful in that regard is our mobility phase, which we developed over the years. As you can see, it's not called a stay abroad because it allows you to gain experience elsewhere in English speaking context, but you do not have to go abroad to do that to another country. So for instance, you could do an internship at a startup for computer linguistics in Berlin provided they are an international crowd and their working language was English. But you can also use some of our many partnership agreements and attend classes in your specialization at another university in Europe or elsewhere. Our third really great feature that makes this master program stand out is the module career orientation and professionalization. We are very proud to have a module integrating your preparation for future career into your studies. Again, something I believe you will not find elsewhere. So 
what does that entail? Um, this module, again, can be tailored by you according to your own interests. You can do workshops and seminars, for instance, how to prepare for a job fair, or we often also of, offer seminars with mock job interviews. You can take classes in key competencies, for instance, project management. You can do internship or job placements, voluntary work, you can become part of our mentoring uh, program. Um, and these are really just example, examples. So as you could see, the activities in career orientation and professionalization, just like the mobility phase and many of the activities in core skills research focus can all be listed separately on your CV. And we have often found that this has made a huge difference in finding a job after the, your, your study. These three modules very much represent CV boosters that personal departments and companies look out for. So as I said earlier, our students easily find jobs and we've often lately had students being hired before they even graduate. So now as promised my final point, what's it like in Saarland? What's it like in Saarbrücken? Um, we are very friendly people here, no town versus gown. And uh, as I've already point, pointed out earlier, this whole region, Saarland and the capital Saarbrücken, because of their history and their location on the border, are very open-minded and welcoming people with a strong feeling of being part of Europe. Importantly, for many of you, I assume, we have a low cost of living, affordable accommodation. The average student apartment here costs 280 euros. In contrast, for instance, to Munich, where it's close to 800 euros for student accommodation. So I guess that's also something that one may want to take into account. We have great bus services to the university. And that reminds me, um, our study fee is currently 289 euros for the semester. And that includes a bus pass for the whole Saarland, which means you can also travel to Luxembourg or France, for instance. We also have a welcome center for international students. So you will find it easy to settle here. And last, my last slide, the heart of Saarbrücken, the St. Johanna Market to show you that we have a great student life. Um, I've actually studied here myself, so I can vouch for it. Saarbrücken is small, but it is a capital. So we have everything, clubs, concert halls, theaters, the opera, the ballet, um, what have you. So, right, to wrap up. Um, if you're interested in a broad approach with a specialized focus, we will offer you teaching excellence in the heart of Europe with as, as much input and help as you may need, but also a very flexible program that you can tailor according to your own interests. Do not hesitate to contact me with any further questions. And thanks a lot for listening. And we are very much looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much, Dr. Gerhard, uh, for this quite informative, at the same time, concise uh, presentation. I've just put also uh, in the chat the email that you mentioned uh, in the presentation so that it's easier for the attendees to Thank copy you. that email if they need Thank you very much. questions. Yeah, of course, you're welcome. And yeah, the, regarding the last the last picture on the presentation you showed, it's really nice with these clubs and everything you mentioned. And I hope really that very soon everything will be back to this normal life so the students can really enjoy all these beauties of the island and of the whole Germany. Uh, thank you very much once again. Um, and there were, there were some questions uh, directed to you during the Q&A, so you're always welcome to go and see what's going on there. But of course, I will collect some towards the end. So just one thing to say, uh, it seems to me that they're quite interested in this program, which is really nice, just based on this uh, Q&A. Session. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, let me now share with you, dear friends, um, my screen once again, shortly. And just for your information, uh, I also shared uh, links uh, to the web course website of just presented uh, program from Unisarland.
and also my German University's page on this program in the chat. So attendees, you can also check them out, uh, these links. And now um, let's move uh, forward. And we have our second program, another great program, and we have second special guest who will present it, Dr. Kerstin Anja Münderlein from University of Bamberg. And she will present also the MA program uh, in English and American Studies, and she's academic advisor for this uh, master program. And now we are moving eastern towards the east of Germany, uh, towards the Czech, Czech border, which is also another great country. So uh, now I would uh, ask, uh, Dr. Munderlein, I will stop sharing now my screen and I will ask Dr. Munderlein to uh, present this program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Georgi, and um, thank you also for showing us where Bamberg is. So that is something you, you're right. We're towards the east. We're in the southeast. We're in Bavaria. I already put out a link into the chat that you hopefully can all see. Um, this is the starting page of our program, and um, before I'll do the screen sharing, I'll just very briefly introduce the university to you. Um, because our university is a young and old university, it was founded in the 17th century in 1647 as an Academia Bambergensis, and it turned into a university in 1773, was suspended later on, but now, ever since 1979, we are back as a full university. We are like the University of Saarland, a middle-sized university with currently, I think, 12 and a half thousand students, um, and we are very proud to have lots of, of visiting students but also international students who see Bamberg as their home because they started their international program there. I'm now screen sharing with you to give you a few impressions of, of Bamberg itself because our university page provides um, a nice picture gallery which I'm just going to show you briefly and then we're moving into the program. I hope you can see it there. These are the university buildings. Our university is more or less, you know, scattered around town and we are right at the center. So our program where we normally teach is here in the university at and the Universität, which means at the university and the house numbers are five and seven. This is where our offices are. So you're right at the center of town and right next to the university, you'll also find um, Ausstraße, the very street where kind of student life is going on with all the cafes. So um, studying in Bamberg is a nice experience because of the wonderful architecture, because of the community of students, because of um, the community of students and, and lecturers, which is very nice. And like uh, Dr. Gerhard, I also studied at Bamberg, so uh, I can vouch for what I'm saying about Bamberg University. Um, and what we have um, in our master's program is also very interesting and also potentially very, very um, well exciting if you would like to plan a very distinctly individual program for yourself. Now, let me show you why that is. I am moving now to the page that I also put in the chat, which is the starting page of our program. Our master's program in English and American studies can be studied in two branches, and one of them is a cooperation with, internationals, with international universities. Um, I'm scrolling down so you can see that. You can see them at one glance. Um, we have the regular track which is studied at Bamberg University, but does include options for internship or for a study abroad. And you can study it as a part of the so-called joint program with several other universities. I'm going to show you which they are later on. And here you have at least one mobility semester that you will spend abroad at one of our partner universities. I will start with the regular track and devote approximately the same amount of time to the regular track as to the joint program. Um, I will briefly show you what it is that we offer, what it is that you would get to study. We also have an um, exhaustive uh, service program, so to call it. One of our uh, wonderful student helpers is here. And also we're very happy to also have our head of the examination board and professor of English literature, Professor Christoph Hausitschka here. So if you have questions later on, please do not hesitate. Our student helper, Leonie, um, who is very much into the practical side of things, um, is sure to help you with all the questions you have. We are now moving into the Master English and American Studies regular track. So here we go. Let's follow that one. 
Again, you see one of our um, very old, it's actually the oldest building that we have in the university. And uh, this program here um, is easy to look at when we look at the curriculum and structure. Like the program of the University of Saarland, we're also dealing with a four semester program with a maximum study time of six semesters and also the option to study it as a part-time course of studies in case you need to work on the side. Generally, what we have is we have 40, these are the credit numbers here, 40 credits for so-called required modules in the areas cultural studies, literary studies, linguistics, and practical language training. In, in cultural studies and literary studies, we both cater to British and American literature and culture. And I will later on also show you some more info on our institute so that you get to know or see what these uh, institutions are like. Now let's scroll down a bit to see how this is structured. When you start studying with us, you get to start with literature, culture, linguistics and language proficiency. But from then onwards, it is very much about what you want to do. In the regular track, you can decide if you want to focus very specifically on one subject area, let's just say, for the sake of argument, you would like to do literature and coming from literary studies myself, I'm very partial to that. So if you want to do that, you can continue with the consolidation module and the profile module and your master's thesis in literature. You even have the option to do another well, module group, what we call entirely in literature. So that's what you could do. You could do entirely literature, or you decide, well, I'd rather do something that is more balanced, then you could balance it out. And then you can decide, well, hang on, when I was in my BA program, I studied history, and I would like to continue with another subject altogether. Then this batch here, restricted electives, is exactly for you, because you are able to include up to 18 ECTS credits from another subject area altogether. So that is the joy of our wonderful master's program, which is complemented with 12 ECTS credits from different sections where most of our students decide to learn languages. You can study anything from German to Swedish to Arabic, um, or you have the option to take a voluntary internship for six ECTS, meaning that again, this program is very much about you, about what you want and how you would like to present yourself in your academic future or in your um, in your professional future. And this program can help you, um, you know, move exactly into the direction that you want. If the direction that you want, well, is, for example, to study abroad and to study in a consortium of universities, you might want to decide not to do the regular track of the master's, but returning to the two branches page that we saw before, you might want to go into this one here, the joint program. Now, the joint program consists of a consortium of partner universities and mobility partners. And as you can see here, these partner universities are Graz, uh, Karl Franzens University in Graz, Austria. Then we have the Université de Paris in France, Ca Foscari in Italy, the Aguilonian University in Krakow in Poland. And as mobility partners, we also have City College of New York, the University of Peach in Hungary, and the Autonomous University in Barcelona, Spain, and Spain are on their way to become a partner university. When you decide to do this program, what you do is you have to undertake a two-step application because you first apply to the consortium. And once accepted there, you apply to Bamberg University. You will also spend one semester abroad. And if we look here again at curriculum and structure, as you can see here, you will see that this is slightly different from the other one, because here you start again with the basic um, compulsory modules in literature, linguistics, culture, and language proficiency, and then you move on, but you have a larger profile module area, which is the area in which you write your master's thesis. So here you get to concentrate more on one specific area, and you then spend one semester or two semesters abroad in which you can fill up all of these modules. So that's the big difference here. 
I'm showing you this page particularly because you see that it's got so many sub pages that you might want to browse later on. That's why I also gave you the link, because what we are also offering is a career orientation service. Um, and this is kind of a, an ongoing service that you can use. We have a lovely colleague, Igor Balduino, who's also an alumnus of the program, and he can help you with all sorts of career questions, starting with careers in academia or outside of academia. Um, what we have and what I wanted to show you very much is we've got a page that is called Basis. This is our support offer because we have a group of very lovely and very um, well-trained um, student helpers, Leonie is one of them, who have been doing this for quite some time and what they offer is several services. We will start by having, of course, an orientation meeting, but before you even start in Bamberg, you can ask our student helpers for help arriving, meaning going to the bank, helping you with enrollment, etc. We also have an international help desk that is in session once a week where all students can go and ask their questions to another student helper in case you're a bit wary of asking one of the teachers. We offer academic uh, workshops and one of them would be the one on infrastructure. How does the university work? What types of courses do we offer? How do we write term papers? Um, and if you want to continue with how do we write term papers, the workshop academic research which is a two-part workshop will be for you. All of these offers of service we have every semester. So regardless of whether you start in the winter or in the summer semester, they will be there for you. Currently, since we are all living, you know, in Corona times, much of that is coordinated via, well, internet, via the internet. And um, what I can show you is that we are working with a Moodle platform and it's called the virtual campus of the University of Bamberg. So everything you just saw is coordinated even during times of COVID. So don't be deterred in ap applying for um, studying in Bamberg now, because even though it, there might be problems that you might face still globally because of COVID, it will not affect your studying here because we are conducting most of the things online at the moment. All of the things that I showed you on the page that I was before over here um, is valid all the time. We are also in the process of being accredited. So this is an accredited program. And if you want to start by, you know, figuring out why you would want to go to Bamberg, have a look at this page. It's got good reasons. And we try to summarize everything that people coming in from somewhere else in the world, from wonderful places, might want to know about Bamberg. Also, you might want to watch our um, YouTube videos. We've got several of them, which introduce Bamberg to you. Bamberg, the World Heritage Site with a tightly knit student community, even though we are now only, as you can see, in our home offices, this community of students has worked very well. The academic quality has worked very well over the last uh, semesters, or actually over the last years. And um, the interaction between teachers and students is still um, something that I, when I was a student, liked very much, and that's one of the reasons why I'm happy to work in this program and see new students, hopefully like you, um, in the future. I think if I go into even more detail, it might be off-putting because it is a lot of material for you guys. So um, I can only refer you to the website, have a good look, and uh, like the University of Saarland, we can easily be contacted via contact. Um, where I can see Professor Hausuchka, my colleague, Dr. Suzanne Brehler, who is currently not here, and me. And as you can see here, we can all be reached via the same email address, and maybe Georgi can also put it into the chat. So that it, would it be from us for the moment. And I'm looking forward to your questions and stopping the screen share now. Thank you very much. Dr. Munderlein, uh, first of all, thank you very much. And could you please just quickly check in the chat whether I, I had a time to quickly, uh, correctly copy this email into the chat? Yeah, great. So the email is in the chat. Thank you very much for this quite detailed information. And yeah, as you could see, dear attendees, you can also go to this website and Professor uh, Dr. Munderlein also shared it um, first, and then I also shared it. And um, you can follow go follow these links and get all the necessary information. And now you can all, if you wish, turn on your cameras because we have finished with our presentations. And now maybe let's move to the short Q&A session as we have 
quite a lot of time left still. And we have quite a lot of questions, which are still open. So um, maybe I will ask these questions. Like uh, I, I was monitoring these questions. And what I found quite often uh, popping up to question to both programs uh, from Univamberg and Zaland as well, uh, students are asking, uh, asking about the needed grade from the bachelor. So what is the minimum requirement so that they can um, be uh, eligible for your master's degree? Uh, we don't have a minimum grade. What we have is a language requirement. Uh, we have a language requirement of C1 in English, and this has to be shown with the help of a standardized test. So studying in English in the bachelor's program is not kind of what we regard as equivalent, even though it might be, but you can prove that easily with the test. But other than that, we don't have a GPA that we use as a minimum. Okay, yes, clear. Thank you very much for this quite clear answer. Regarding this um, uh, English language certificate, yes, so uh, dear friends, as you could also hear, I, would, I wanted to ask this as well, whether the uh, studying in English on the bachelor totally English counts. So there here are more strict requirements in this case. So dear friends, if you don't have tests now, uh, get, get ready for that as well. Okay, uh, Professor Dr. Holswishka, would you like also to add something to that before I move to another question? Or thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, actually, I think I can't really add anything to what uh, Anya has said. Um, I just uh, might add that um, teaching in this international environment at the University of Bamberg has, uh, for me personally been a, a dream coming true. And, um, and uh, this is also the spirit I share with all my colleagues at the department. Thank you. Thank you very much for these nice words. <laughs> um, now I will uh, go to another question. Um, it was, yeah, actually, it's again, let's stick to academic, uh, academic phase. So it also uh, was mentioned several times, not only grade and uh, this English level requirement, but also I my, I caught some questions regarding this necessary background. Is it strictly, for example, do they have to have bachelor in English and American studies, or uh, there can be some other uh, backgrounds acceptable as well? Maybe we could also repeat it one more time so that students uh, know it for sure. We, um, we allow students of all philologies to apply at the moment but we are about to change that as of next year and then we will require a major course in English and American studies but again the focus is decidedly on philology meaning that courses in translation or business English for example would not be included so we are looking for students who have a good grasp of linguistics um, cultural studies and um, literature when they start with us um, yes that's pretty much what I can say about that Professor Dr. Hoswishka, would you like to uh, add something to that in this case as well? Or should I switch to another question? <laughs> um, not really, uh, perhaps just that uh, in free electives, you may also attend classes during your program in different um, disciplines, such as, let's say, German literature, French literature, or something similar. And this is uh, 12, 12 points, I believe, Kerstin. Okay, yeah, also quite interesting information, I'm sure, for our attendees. Um, okay, uh, let's uh, move a little bit out from the academic, academic issues and uh, ask a more technical, maybe, questions. Uh, I also saw several times um, that there were some questions about fees, but before I hand it over this question to you, first of all, I would like to ask, uh, tell our, our attendees that in Germany, generally, when it comes to public universities, usually you don't have to pay for studying. So there are no tuition fees. Yes, there is a uh, Bundesland, Baden-Württemberg, where for international students, there is a marginal fee of 1,500 euros per semester. Unfortunately, I think it's from 2018 or something, uh, quite recent. But in other cases, mostly you don't have to pay for, for studies. You pay the semester contribution. And maybe our, uh, our uh, speakers would like to a little bit say more about it. So because there were some questions about fees. Uh, yeah. And then I will add something up if something is missing. Yeah. 
Um, yes, we have an administration fee of 101 euro and I think 50 cents. Um, so this administration fee, like in Saarland, covers uh, the buses. But um, since we're located in the middle of Bavaria, it doesn't cover uh, going abroad, unfortunately, but it covers um, um, all the administration fees and the program itself has no tuition fee as such. Um, when you apply for the joint program, and you go abroad to the universities that do have um, tuition fees, you still don't have to pay them because you will remain a student of the Uni of Bamberg, meaning that you'll still only need to pay the 101.50. Thank you. Yeah, that's actually really amazing. I mean, I also use this, this semester ticket and CBA knows also about it. This is really wonderful. I mean, despite the fact that you pay this money, you paid for you as well. I mean, at the same time, because anyway, most cases you have to use uh, transportation or maybe regional trains, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really, really comfortable and you actually win this money. So I would say that it's absolutely free still studying in Germany, I would say. And maybe last question, and we will finalize with that. I will not take more of your time because you already answered quite a lot of questions. Uh, there were also talks about internships, and usually we, we often have this question, and today also it popped up several times. Um, so is there any uh, in any way uh, programs help students to find internships and somehow assist them in doing that, or they have to do it absolutely independently? So this is a question that they're also interested in. It's a bit different for us because we do not have such an obligatory module. And um, what we have with our career orientation service is the opportunity to talk about different options for, um, for internships. Where could people look for options? Uh, which areas are suitable? Which areas are open to students? Um, and um, other than that, we um, encourage students to look for internships themselves if they so want to, but they're also not required to, to do them. They are, however, um, very much invited to go and have a look at the at the career orientation service because they our, our colleague Igor comes up with with lots of wonderful ideas actually in, in about areas where you can actually work in that people in English and American studies probably would not have identified as such. I might also add that we have an alumni and uh, the alumni also is a very useful tool for new students to get in contact with uh, former students and to learn more about job opportunities in the region. Okay, thank you very, very much. That's really great. Um, I think um, I would definitely say that we answered today all the questions because during your presentations, you already addressed most of the questions in the Q&A and now we like finalized and CBA and Leonie were also answering this question. So thank you very much for all. Uh, I will for the final time today, <laughs> one more time share with you my screen, uh, dear attendees. So we have already covered this uh, part of these questions. And once again, I would like to thank you everyone. Of course, first of all, the speakers, our guests who uh, participated, who presented and participated in the Q&A section. Thank you very much for this really valuable information. Um, and as you could see, we can we still have some open questions, but uh, dear attendees, uh, if you would like to, of course, uh, <laughs> you would like to get answers to these questions and send us email um, to on our email, uh, send us uh, on uh, info at mygermanist.com. Uh, CBA, please once again share it in the chat, our email. And you also have emails for from both programs, which was presented, and I also texted in the chat. You are also, I'm sure, always welcome uh, to send your questions to directly to the programs as well. And uh, uh, you will get they will get back to you, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. And one last thing uh, to our attendees. So if you're happy with our webinar, uh, today it was quite informative for you uh, it will be really nice if you could rate us on facebook or google give us stars on google because it will be uh, really cool for me cbay and our team to continue what we are doing for you uh cbay please yeah, i think you already did it great great job thank you very much before i ask you or did it in that you shared it in the chat the direct links in are in the chat so you're welcome to evaluate us and other than that once again uh, to speakers, to our guests. Thank you so much. It was really interesting for me as well to read through this curricula because I have, it, this is not my profile, 
so I was more into I am into more in political science but it was really interesting for me to read through because it's quite interesting programs and all these partnerships and opportunities with, that are really great and once again i'm underlying it how i'm saying that it's totally for free student semester contribution does not count i mean it's again for you dear students so it's totally for free this great quality program so i would encourage you to uh, send your application as soon as you have them ready so thanks once again and have a great afternoon or evening depending on where you are now based thank you very much bye bye, bye. thank you very much bye. for having us bye bye thank bye. you for being with us bye